This tutorial will show you how to line up an audio track to a sequence. Now the sequence I'm working on is meant to be the same as a, a song by the Pet Shop Boys called Shopping. So if I press play you'll see that I've already started to try and make it sound the same. Now I want to continue working on this but I'm going to find it easier if I have the original audio to work alongside it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find the original audio file and drop it into my sequence so then I can just run alongside. So I'm going to go to where I've kept the audio file, so it's in a folder here. Then I'm just going to drop it in. Now I'm dropping, drag and dropping it in from the folder and I'm going to put it in at bar 5. Now I'm putting it at bar 5 because that's where my sequence starts and I let go. I'm going to copy the file to working directory. I don't want to split the channels and I'll click OK. And as you can see it pops up there. Next thing I'm going to do is just rename this track original audio file. Right then, so I've got that in there. So as you can hear, they play, play together. The only problem is, is that they don't start in the same place. So what I need to do is zoom in. So I go to my zoom sliders here. I'm going to zoom in a lot. Make sure I then go down so I can still see my audio file. Keep zooming in. Stay with the file. And I'm zooming in again here. So zoom in as close as possible so you can see a bit of a gap emerging. Now this gap, as you can see, I've put the timeline on bar 5. The gap means that the track isn't actually starting on bar 5, it's just starting slightly later. Now, what I'd need to do is just edit it a little bit by drawing in the, the line. But the problem is, because we're on snap to grid at the moment, it will only make a big edit, as in an edit worth of a bar. So what I want to do is take the snap to grid off, very, very briefly. So I take it off, then I bring the sample right to the start, just like that. And then I put the snap to grid back on. And when I drag the sample left by left clicking and dragging, it moves. And now it's locked in with the beginning. So if I zoom out again, back out so we can see all the tracks together. And I put the track up the top with, so I can see what's going on. And you'll see it plays at the same time as the other one. Now, as you can see, it's actually playing slightly quicker, so I need to get the tempo right now. Now, there's two ways of doing this. I can actually change the tempo down here. Now, I know the tempo is 125, so I either just write 125 under fixed tempo, or I can use the Cubase tempo track. Now, to find the Cubase tempo track is dead easy. All I need to do here is go up to Project, select Tempo Track, then in the Transport bar, I select Tempo, turn it on, and it goes to Track. Now, it automatically sets it to 120, but rather than change it here, we want to change it in the Tempo Track itself. So we need to set up a new event. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to set the time just slightly before. So I'm going to double click in my transport bar, press 3. It's going to start on the correct tempo two bars before it's, it comes in with the main sequence. Then I choose in the tempo track itself, I choose the pencil tool and I click on the blue line. Now as you can see, the minute I've clicked on the blue line, it's given me some information here. The information you want to change here is tempo. You want to change tempo to 125. 125. As you can see, it now sets the tempo in both the transport bar and the track. So if I just click off the tempo bar, you'll hear that the track now plays at the right speed. I'm also going to turn down the original slightly so I can hear my own track as clearly as I can hear the tempo track. Do that by making sure that your original audio is highlighted here, then going to the left and this thing that looks a bit like a triangle is actually the volume control. We'll take it down to about there. And now I can hear them both together. Fabulous. Now I can work on this project bit by bit, and all I need to do now is copy the stuff that comes out of the original. The next thing I'm going to do, there's a slightly 
strange bit towards the end of this tune where the, the tempo doesn't change, but the number of beats in the bar does. So it's round about here at bar 92. So I'm just going to zoom in so I can see the bar numbers. And there's 92 coming up. If you hear when we get to 92, there's only three beats in this bar. So watch this. Four beats in 91, three beats in 92, and then back to four beats again in 93. So it means that the click's now out. So what we need to do here is change the time signature. It's very easy to do. Again, first thing I'm going to do is open up the tempo track. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click here on the transport bar and turn and type in 92. Done. Next thing on the tempo uh, on the transport bar, not on the tempo track, I'm going to type in 3 4 rather than 4 4. So here's my 3 coming up and press return. And can you see it's changed the tempo track here? So now the rest of the tune is now in 3 4. Now we don't want the rest of the tune to be in 3 4, just this one bar. So the next thing we do, type in 93 and set that back to 4 4. Now what will happen when we click off the trans uh, tempo track, you'll be able to hear, I'll just make sure this is slightly quieter so we can hear the click, that the click stays in time. We'll have four beats here, three beats on 92 and four beats on 93. There we go. So it's all working perfectly now. Just play it once more. Lovely. Okay, so that's how to import an audio file into your sequence.